people have asked me, so what is the difference between the Mercedes A-Class sedan and the Mercedes CLA? Hmm. We'll take a look at it as AMG 35 here with the A-Class sedan and the Mercedes AMG CLA 35. So, which one is the best or maybe the more suitable for you? What are the differences? We'll explain you all about it here on Autogefühl with Thomas. Let's go. The new A-Class generation features a very modern daytime running light. Headlamps start with halogen, then LED, and optional, those ones here, the multi-beam LED, also with a special high beam function. So the AMG line, just a visual package, features a diamond pin grille. Here the true first, or the cheapest AMG version for the A-Class, hatch sedan, and also for the CLA. This one here comes also with the, some kind of dot structure grill, but then you have those two horizontal fins like we used to see in 63 models, for example, in other cars. And of course, the stronger bumper in the lower part. And this one here, the mountain gray Magno color, it's also one of my favorite ones from Mercedes, has this matte paint finish. The length is at 4 meters 54, 14 foot 9 or 179 inches and it's really interesting because that means that this one here, the A-Class sedan, is about 13 centimeters longer than the A-Class hatch but 15 centimeters shorter than the CLA. So here the A-Class sedan sits in between lengthwise. So we'll also see later on how that one plays out on the interior. But here I can tell you so far, this one here has this classic sedan shape and also very, works very well in this grey Magno color. I see here the, how they play with light and shadow, it's really working very well here. 19 inch rims, those ones are the top that are available. AMG special rims, also with Brigger Bake, Brakeston, and also features a contrasting black lower lip. The frames are also hold right and black together with the black covers for the side mirrors. I think the A-Class sedan is actually quite beautiful and indeed there were some questions, okay, why do they still make a CLA then? Hmm, yeah, I mean, I think you can indeed raise the question because this one <laughs> already looked like a little bit like a previous generation CLA and also lengthwise too. What do you actually prefer, a hatch or sedan or the CLA with those A-Class? All on the same wheelbase, by the way. So whereas front and side profile is rather subtle in the design with the A35, the rear really screams out and tells you, hmm, I'm really the sporty one. So with this huge diffuser in the lower end, I mean, you 
can even put stuff on there to carry around. It almost lo looks like that. By the way, those exhaust tips here, those are not the real exhaust ones. Yes, the exhaust air comes actually right there. It goes through, but the outer one is just cosmetics. And then we have this lip right there. So it's not really you know, integrated in car color. Also is a contrast, so indeed pretty strong. And if you take a look at the A35S hatch, I think the sedan in the rear even screams out a little bit more, unless you go with the hatch and the special aerodynamic pack where you have an even bigger wing. But that one is an option. So, what do you think so far? And technology and suspension information. First of all, the 35 models, they feature another metal plate under the engine to increase the stiffness of the vehicle. And technology wise on the suspension, normal. Yeah, A class comes with a standard suspension, then there's a sport suspension, minus 50 millimeters. That's also the standard suspension for the AMG models with a little AMG notch on that. And also, there's an adaptive suspension in general. And if you pick that one for the 35 models, it will still also have a little stiffer AMG setup. I would also advise you to go for the adaptive suspension because especially here with the Mercedes models, it makes a lot of difference. And the adaptive suspension, we've tested that on the 35 hatch and also with the CLA recently, even the 250, is really great suspension because it really can combine sportiness and comfort. Oh, by the way, that's the real name, Mercedes AMG A35 4MATIC. Well, and I used to just, you know, I like to use the old naming where they just said Mercedes A-Class 35 AMG. I found that a little bit easier, so I'll keep it that way, even if I don't like it. <laughs> well, in 4MATIC, because this one here has all-wheel drive, but it's a front-wheel driven platform. This one here, this AMG engine. In those cars here, it's not hand-built, but from works. But still, it gives you a great performance. Two-liter, four-cylinder turbo with about 300 horsepower and 4.8 seconds is the excavation figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. So pretty powerful. And the A45 would just be slightly faster, so you also be very quick already with that one. The all-wheel drive then is, you know, front first, front first, and then also Talk to the rear on demand up to a 50 50 percentage. It also features a launch control that you can get maximum traction, and in a launch control, you'll get a lot of torque on the rear, probably you know close to 50 percent, because then you have a lot of traction from the get go. And I tried it here in the hatch version, it was really amazingly fast. You should check out the full driving review. We went on Mallorca to drive that one, it was really a blast. And I think even this, you know, the, the gray, when the hood is opening, open, really looks cool. Also see how they use some weight savings and don't put the whole plate right there. Very interesting and good that we have hydraulic dampers. But I think when you pay about the, like 60k or something for a car, you can also expect hydraulic dampers. We'll take a look on the inside now. And I'm always amazed by this Magno gray color. I just love it. And by the way, for all A-class platform cars, A-class, B-class, CLA, when you just slam the doors slightly, you see, they don't close properly. And the reason for that is they are so well dampened on the inside here, everywhere, all around, for the noise insulation and also you know, for against wind noise, that you really have to slam them that they close properly. Very interesting, right? So, and then inside of the doors, there's some article leather red cover, beautifully done. You don't feel a difference that it would not be animal origin. Also at the inside right there, then aluminum brush here, for example. You get different inlets, if you like. Also carbon fiber style could also get. And the AMG here features an illuminated AMG entry badge. Then important, you get sport seats, but not those ones. The base sport seat would be ones with separated head restraint, and they would be a little bit thicker and more comfortable. And they come with microfiber on the inside and article leatherette on the outside. The same would also go with this seat, with same also microfiber dynamica on the inside and leatherette article on the outside. But those ones here then are the optional sports seats with integrated head restraint, so basically the super sports AMG seats. They look fancier, they have more support here, but on the long term run, the base sports seats will be more comfortable. You have to think about that if you go on the racetrack or not. AMG steering wheel, this one is also completely new. 
the ACC is controlled right here then, the Distronic, and those fields here will be used to control, for example, the damper setting and the right black one there that's turning up, this will be used for the driving mode selecting. And the same we have also seen already in bigger cars. Let's now get inside and when people ask me, would you go for a C-Class or for an A-Class? I always say as a tall person, you have more comfort still a segment higher. And when you're a little bit small, it doesn't make so much of a difference. I'm one is 86 or six foot one. That hardly leaves me any headroom when you have the panoramic ins roof installed here as it is here at the moment. If you want a little bit more head clearance, then leave out the panoramic roof. The steering wheel is actually quite massive for this small vehicle, so and also a little bit overloaded with all of the elements. You'll soon all see that. Then it can be switched around here in height and also in reach. That's a nice, smooth process. Well, and then again, those AMG sport seats, they are definitely sportier than the base sport seats. So, yeah, I think they are definitely less comfortable than the base sport seats would be. And here, electric control is never right here. It's over at the inside of the doors. I think it's definitely also a nice solution. Then you can also switch all angles you want to have with a three-seat memory, by the way. Now the interior overview, here soft touch at the top dashboard, then you got in the 35 those AMG inlets, and then this one here also soft touch and with this dot structure. I wonder how that is, you know, uh, able, how you're able to clean that later on, we will see about that. Turbine vents and then a lot of black piano lacquer being used, I think they could have used less in this case. 7 inch, it starts on the left side, an optional 10.25. This one always as it is right here, and then you have one square, well, one element that almost goes through visually. So two times 10.25 inch, that is the maximum setup, and we we'll soon go to details of those. This is touch, yes, but you can also control it via the lower pad, both possible, and also right thumb here to control the main screen. However, the car needs to be fully powered for that. It's not here on the motor show at the moment. So right thumb for the right screen, and you would use then the left thumb for the left, left screen to control those instruments. And here on the steering wheel, when it's properly powered, then you would see the driving mode selector right here on the right side, for example. And that you can also browse through the sports mode where then the RPMs will turn up higher and so on. Now the infotainment screen, the map right there. You see here, right in new york city for you and it's actually a very nice visualization and the overall system has become way easier now than past mercedes systems the amg also have some performance gauges especially for example you can check some you know um, engine functions like you know kilowatt and so on when the ignition is turned on well and then there's also the smartphone connection, either classic via Bluetooth, that would be possible, or also Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, oh, <laughs> colleague Shmi was obviously connected earlier to this vehicle here. And you can also use the voice input activated at the steering wheel or say, hey Mercedes. The instrument display also looks quite equal. You can also check it out in our head review. This one here, not with the fully ignited version at the moment with this way, we need the car key for that. But it's actually also a very nice and clear display. Also, this car features the head-up display. Then you will have the information right in your line of sight. This is the hole where the projector sits. Climate unit is still manual, so you can also very well adjust it while driving. And in the lower middle console, USB-C device next to cup holders. And they can also be somewhat adaptive. And if you don't want to use a touch, you can also use this pad here. And go back or also write an address or something but usually you would use the voice input that again works very well when you're standing outside with the vehicle and here the middle console opening on the armrest with another USB-C port let's now get in the rear and since in the new A-Class generation they have put the wheelbase a little bit longer you can now also sit in the rear as a tall adult it's of course not ample of space, it's not the longest vehicle, and this might be also one of the very rare cases where those optional sport seats actually leave you a little bit more legroom. Usually we have the case that when you pick the optional sport seats you have less legroom because the seats are thicker. Here they are thinner, and those sport seats you usually also drive with, you know, 
little bit higher angle of the seats. So in this case, it looks like I would have more legroom now with those optional sport seats, at least one advantage of them. Headroom is also totally okay, although it's a sedan with the falling roof. But, you know, it's actually then quite cozy here on the rear. Isofix at the outside of the seats and you actually have to unlock the seats from the trunk and then you can flip them around right here. Taking a look at the trunk, 370 liters for the hatch of the A-Class, 420 liters for the sedan, 460 would be for the CLA. So this one here also trunk capacity wise right in the middle. The height here is just about 50 centimeters. That's quite decent so you can load in things quite easily. If you compare it to a predecessor you can see here, well there's no predecessor of a sedan here but look at that one here. It's a wide opening. The A-Class before that was pretty narrow and here also in width that's about a meter in width and in length right there it's a little bit less than a meter and if you flip the seats which is possible just from the rear compartment you have to unlock the seats right here then you can load through things to the front seats like this is about yeah a little bit more than 160 in meters so considering it's a compact sedan segment i think it's quite well usable here in the trunk isn't it in the front here of the CLA 35 we can see this special AMG grill and it is somewhat similar than the one we see at the sedan 35 version AMG badge, two horizontal fins and this dot structure however also here the AMG line features a diamond pin grill then also horizontal fins right there. The CLA looks of course quite aggressive also. Although it's just a compact vehicle, well, platform wise, but length wise it's a little bit different. Soon tell you more about that. Headlamp starts still with halogen, optional LED and then optional, optional LED multi-beam as we see it right here. And the CLA, if you compare it to the sedan, has a little bit wider daytime running light right here. Overall, five centimeters wider also in the track if you compare it to the predecessor CLA. The length is 4 meters 69, 15 foot 4 or 184 inches and that's about 5 centimeters longer than the predecessor CLA. And this one's also then the same length as the Mercedes C-Class. So also very interesting that this one is still the A-Class platform but the length already as long as the C-Class which would be a segment above that. 16 to 19 inch wheels overall available 18 inch standard with the AMG model and those ones here the optional 19 inch wheels with a dual color scheme pretty impressive and also very contrasting to this yellow color here you can also get black frames around the windows and black mirror caps if you um, go for this package here it is rather the bright one and I think it also fits to the yellow color too so the side silhouette is the special thing about the CLA because it has this Coupe shape. However, it's indeed not that different to the new A-Class sedan, I think. It's a little bit sleeker as for the roofline here and of course, since it's longer, it's also somewhat more stretched. Suspensions here, it's basically the same as for all the A-Class models or the A-Class platform models. You get the standard suspension and you get the sport suspension, which is 50 millimeters lower. That one would also be standard for the AMG with a special AMG setup. And then there's optional adaptive suspension. And if you go for that one, then with the AMG, it has an adaptive AMG tuning, so it's a little bit stiffer. I would advise you rather stick with the base suspension or then always go with the adaptive one because the sports one is actually quite stiff unless you really exactly want that. With the adaptive suspension, you at least have some more variation that you can choose between the comfort and sport mode depending on the situation. Take a look here at the rear. The CLA has very stretched tail lamps. However, if you consider the predecessor, the predecessor was more central in its lines, was more, you know, like swinging lines, roundish. This one here is actually, let's say, not that central dramatic if you compare it to the predecessor. Hmm, but maybe it will appeal more a mass audience than I don't know. Well, as a 
longer overhang here. Wheelbase is just the same as with all of the A-Class models. And then the exhaust tips here, just beauty. The inside, the, you can find the reed exhaust. Then the massive diffuser right here at the lower end. Again, very big contrast, especially to this yellow color. Of course, there are also other colors available if you like. And integrated wing lip here. I think that's also really elegant if it's in the same vehicle color. The 35 models here in this compact segment by Mercedes, they all feature the same in a 2-liter 4-cylinder turbo petrol engine with just over 300 horsepower in 4.8 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Again, the same for the A35 hatch and also the A35 sedan. Well, they use it in all of their compact models and it's really enough if you say, oh, where's the 45? Yes, it will also be coming, but this one here, as I've driven it in a hatch, is totally fine, I can tell you. And it will be the same engine, just with a little bit more horsepower tuned, so you can also just stay with that one. And all-wheel drive, by the way, also 50% front and rear, this would be the maximum setup. Of course, you can get more traction to the ground. And now I welcome you to the interior of the CLA 35. It's really interesting. In the front, you have some AMG styling here, also this turbine vents and it looks pretty much the same as in the A35 hatch or in the sedan. And then about those seats, the base ones would be normal sports seats with separated head restraints. And they come with Dynamica microfiber on the inside and uh, article leather on the outside. And then option you can get those here, the super sports seats with integrated head restraints. Well, they look quite fancy, they're a little bit less comfortable. And you can see they're also available with a full article setup. So indeed, this one here, the bright white article, leather red on the inside and then black on the outside. And it feels so great. It's, you know, very soft to touch. And it was very funny because recently I also had some discussions you know, with design designers and also engineers that they could sometimes even not differentiate themselves and really had to look it up which one it really, you know, which one it really is. And also at the inside of the doors and here are the seats, this is really all leather red, so very animal friendly, and it's also actually good for the customer. Interior overview, here again you can see, see this structure right there, then a lot of piano lacquer is also being used. Manual climate unit here at the lower part. Hmm, the whole stuff, the whole unit can be shaken a little bit here. That's not too good, but the buttons itself, they have a nice clicking sound, and also when you use those, from open to close, also nicely done, and how you can operate them. When we would put the ignition all on, we could also use the new MBUX voice function, but we don't have the key for the car here at the moment, therefore I'd rather show you a little bit overview here with, you know, zoom in and out. Other than that, I use the GPS command all over voice activation now and not anymore with the classic input. Either touch or you use the touchpad in the lower part. There you can also browse in the infotainment system. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are available when you have this smartphone connection right there. Here yeah, Android Auto via USB or Apple CarPlay also via USB. Or right thumb here for the right screen to use that would work. Volume knob here and the left side on the steering wheel for the main instrument unit. The steering wheel can be adjusted in reach and height right there and I must say it's really a little bit thick for this car it really rather fits to a C 63 or even I mean the E class also has the same uh, AMG steam wheel I think so maybe a little bit too far dimensioned for this very car How, what do you think you always control the seats from the inside of the doors driver and co-driver that's actually a quite nice function and then over here, some more close-ups of the air vents. In the lower part, you slide open the front middle console right there. You can have optional inductive charging pad next to another USB-C supply. Cup holders also adaptive when you press this button right there. Then this pad close-up camera button if you have the optional camera system. This would be the driving selector where you can pick the driving modes, but you can also do that here in the AMG models right here at the steering wheel with this new one, but I don't like them so much. They don't fit to the rest of the quality of the car, I think. And then this pad is just, you know, just to put your hand on it while you control something. And then you can also slide open this armrest here with another two USB-C supplies and some more storage room. 
the rear compartment here of the new CLA generation. The big change is when you compare it to the previous CLA, you can now properly sit here in the rear. That means, well, Headroom-wise, it's still somewhat close, but it's definitely way better than in your predecessor. But the whole car is also a little bit longer, so that's no wonder. And if you compare that one to the A-Class sedan, for example, you have a little bit more head clearance in the A-Class sedan, because this one here has a sleeker roof line, so you also lose some headroom. But you can still sit here somewhat properly as an adult, as long as you're not too tall. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, just that you remember. And well, when I put myself all upright with the spine, then I do hit the ceiling with my head. That's the catch of the CLA. Other than that, also the nice um, Artico seats here on the rear, forming somewhat two single seats. We have some of USB-C supplies here and the 230 volt supply even in the rear part with another AC vent for example. And also more cup holders right there with an armrest. And to flip the seats again, go to the trunk release them and then you can fold them here flat also with the integrated design right here. So, better than in the predecessor but you lose some room if you compare it to the A-Class sedan. This one here, the CLA, is rather about more length in the trunk. Flip the logo here to access the trunk and with 460 liters of boot capacity this one here is the biggest boot of the A-Class, A-Class sedan and the CLA here. CLA is the biggest one because it's also the longest car. And I can show that right here because the trunk length is here at almost 1 meters and 10. So a couple of centimeters longer than the A-Class sedan. And if we flip the seats, we have to unlock them right here. I can show that on one side, right here. And then we can... Oh, seatbelt is holding it tight. There we are. So, and then we can load through as long as things. Of course, the trunk length is, you can really profit from that. So, and here we go, right there. There we go, and that is 180 in centimeters. I think we had about 160 with the A-Class sedan. So, you can very well use it, and again, almost like with the C-Class sedan. The question is really, you know, the CLA is still this design focus. That would be the main argument to go for that. And now to our conclusion for the day, Mercedes A-Class 35 AMG as a sedan. Well, you might ask yourself, is that already a true AMG? And we have driven the hatch as a 35, and it's the same engine right here, and we could say, yes, it's definitely a true AMG because it has abundance of power already. It's actually light and agile to drive, especially here in the A-Class. And I mean, sporty AMG cars, they're supposed to be sporty. And those ones here, the small ones on the A-Class platform, you can really see that they may probably even sportier than their bigger ones, the bigger siblings in the model lineup. Yeah, they have you know, the, the bigger engines, V6 or the inline six, and then also the v, V8 and so on, at least so far. But here you got the compact measurements, and so you're more light and agile, and that's really feel, feels also cool in driving. Of course, we'll do a full driving review of this one very soon. Exteriorize, pretty crisp and sharp. And I think the A-Class works very well as a sedan too. On the interior, good as that, they have a lot of different seat surface alternatives to animal skin. So they're also very sustainable on the inside and also customer and animal friendly both at the same time. So great choice you have there. And you have an interior that already reminds you again of bigger, maybe past even E or S-Class or something. So it will still be pretty expensive as it is here right now. But if you compare it to other AMG models, this will be probably the best price performance you can get. What's your take on that? Please leave it in the comments. And now to the conclusion of the CLA 35. Well, it has a very attractive exterior. That's still the case for the CLA, very central, but not as central as before, I think. It became now a little bit more mainstream. At the 35, of course, a lot of power. It will be very expensive, yes, but also the cheapest still of the AMG models. And we recently drove the CLA here as a normal petrol engine, so not the AMG version, but that one already was quite powerful, the 250, the CLA 250. Tune into that driving review and it was a great drive. So silent on the interior, but still suspension also great balance. So 
I would also go for the adaptive suspension if I would go for the AMG model, a good option to pick too. Nice Artico, animal friendly and user friendly leatherette on the inside here for example, but also microfiber is available, so great seating choices. Well, in the rear, it's better now in the new generation than the predecessor. However, you do have a problem with the headroom still in the CA if you compare it to the A-Class hatch or the A-Class sedan. And then, what's the difference to the A-Class sedan in general? Here you have a longer trunk, longer car overall, that you have already dimensions of a C-Class. Well, you get more tr uh, trunk length and more capacity also in the boot if you actually need that. But indeed, A-Class sedan and CLA both come actually very close. What would be your favorite?